Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Mamba. So for today's video, we're gonna be talking about whether or not you should buy a Type S and if it's the right move for you and your goals for the car or goals in general for the car scene. So let's get right into it. But before we do that, we're gonna stop and get some boba before we get to the shooting spot because it's pretty thirsty. What did he say? Oh. It's a nice cloudy day today, but uh, it's still kind of warm. It's uh, California weather, but let's get right into it. Don't scrape, don't scrape. Ooh. Ooh, don't scrape the bumper. All right, we're good. Let's go. guys we are now here at the location we got the car right there um, it is a little bit dirty because it was raining today but it's not too big of a deal uh, the reason I want to make this video is because I haven't really made any videos for some time now so I thought it would be nice to make at least like a short video debating whether or not you should or should not get a type s in the near future so to get started let's get, let's get some background on my car so this is a 2004 Acura RSX type s I did the up badge with the red badges and then the also the uh, Type S badges. I did remove the Integra ones because I just didn't really like the way it looked up until I got a new hatch. Uh, I've had this car for three years. I bought this car with exactly 100 and 146,000 or 147,000 miles. And right now it's at 205. It's had a lot of miles, a lot of runs in it. Um, but uh, you know, it's reliability. That's the reason I got this car. So. You're looking to buy an Acura RSX Type S. You don't know what you should look for, if you should even buy one, or if it's even worth the money that they're going for nowadays, which is starting to go up. So you, you gotta make your mind up quick on these things. So hopefully this video will actually help you decide whether or not you should get one. So let's go over a general overview. So the RSX Type S came to the US in 2002. Uh, came with the K20A2. It came out with 200 horsepower at the crank and it was a very good step up from the uh, Integra, the DC2, DC4 Integra. And it's more modern, has more powerful engine, more torque, but it also has a little bit more weight. But the overall look is still very Integra. You got the three door hatch look, a uh, very low profile hood, and then obviously the big wing in the back if you really wanted it. Um, but then 2005, they basically gave it a facelift with a new front and rear bumper, headlights, taillights, and also a new engine. It came with a K20Z1 with Type R cams and it made 210 horsepower to the crank. But now with the new horsepower rating system, it only gives it 201. But it's still more powerful than the first generation 02 to 04. So now let's get right into whether you should or should not buy one. I'm going to start off with the cost. The cost has actually gone up immensely on these cars. I bought this car in 2018 for $3,200 with around 146,000 miles on it. So that was back in 2018. So let's fast forward now to 2021. If I were to look at the same exact car with the same mileage and condition of it, clean title, I'd be looking at about 4,000 to maybe 5,500. Um, that's just because of the inflation that these cars have been going through for the last you know, year and a half with COVID and everything. It's been pretty insane. Uh, not to mention with the new generation, the 05, 06 generation, you're gonna be looking at anywhere from 6,000 to about 8,000 for a good, nice example with low miles and a clean title, which is gonna be really hard to find. So for that price that you're gonna be paying for anywhere from 4,000 to 7,000, you're gonna be getting a two liter naturally aspirated engine that revs up to about 8,000 RPM, depending on, depending on whether you get the 0506 or the 0204. Uh, I love both of them. They really healthy engines. The 0506 one has the Type R cams, like I said before, so it makes a little bit more power, but all in all, they're still basically the same car. So should you buy one? 
I keep going off topic. Should you buy one? Should you shouldn't? Should you should you what? Should you do? Should you do not do? Stuff like that. So everyone's main concern when they first buy a new car is the reliability of it. So th like I said before, this engine has a K20 A2 motor or a K20 Z1 depending on the year that you get. And they are very healthy motors. They're good for boosting, they're good for supercharging, they're good for just building off or just leaving them as is and putting some full bolt-ons in a tune. So just kind of going back, I bought this car with 140,000 miles. It's at 205 now and it has not given me a single issue. No oil leaks, the occasional oil burn on VTEC if I don't warm the car up completely. And that's about it. There's no issues that I've had with it. No overheating issues, no leakage issues like I said absolutely no issues these cars get anywhere from 25 to 30 mpg highway and city combined with full bolt-ons no tune i'm getting at about 25 to 28 which is not terrible at all downside is you got to pay premium gas and if you live in california that sucks it sucks a lot actually especially if you're driving 200 miles like me a day just to go to school it's insane but you know that's the price you got to pay for a higher compression motor you got to avoid that knock man you can't be putting just basic unleaded in a high compression car. You, you're insane if you do that, man. You're insane. Now, everyone's experiences are gonna be different, obviously, because of previous owners, their maintenance, how you take care of your car. Everything kind of comes into play. As far as this one, I got really lucky because when I first bought it, it really was not taken care of. But luckily I stepped in on time and started doing some nice maintenance items to her. So she's actually very happy and very healthy. Reliability aside, it's a really good motor. It's a high revving motor, good gas mileage when you need it, and a lot of fun when you want to have some fun on the curvy roads. McPherson suspension in the front probably isn't the best. I kind of wish they would have kept the double wishbone like they did with the DC4s and DC2s, but it is what it is. It's still very good. Uh, it handles great. I removed the front sway bar just so I can get a little bit less understeer. Uh, I got that from the Orange Ball DC5 in Japan. Uh, I really couldn't feel a difference, but you know, it's a nice little placebo effect, just like any other little car mods that you get off eBay, you know? <laughs> it is what it is. So let's move on to the next point. The next point is gonna be aftermarket support, which is what everybody really wants, especially when they get a Honda or any car, as a matter of fact, you wanna start modding it. Aftermarket support on the DC5 is crazy. You will have lots and lots of aftermarket support, especially for the 02 to 04. The 0506 is kind of a niche little market. They don't have too much because there are a lot of electrical and also mechanical components that operate differently. And a lot, a lot of people have really gotten their feet wet with it in terms of aftermarket, which kind of sucks. But, you know, it's kind of a trade off with the 0506. Aftermarket support, though, in general is insane. You have tons of different manufacturers for suspension, engine parts, interior components, exterior components, everything that you might want to do to your car, it's there. You want to go boost, boom, there's a kit. You want to go supercharger, okay, there's a few here and there. So you want to go full all motor LNA, boom, all your stuff is there. Anything you might want is there. It's obviously a lot cheaper than building a v8 or a v6 or an inline six and whatnot it's obviously a lot cheaper because you only got simple mechanical components with a few electronics and you're set Honda, boom it's there k tuner if you got 0506 boom it's there everything that you're gonna want for aftermarket support is there you don't have to wait for some company to develop aftermarket cams aftermarket seats headlights whatever anything you want is under the sun and you got it with this car so the interior it's a very nice interior it really aged well i have the 0506 seats which is one of the reasons i have my srs light on i have my k-tune replica shifter from a previous video if you want a full review go check that out let's open this up It's a very nice, comfortable, modern interior. It's driver focused. You got the dash kind of facing you. My double din doesn't work, but that's on me. It's not part of the car. Got my original Type S. Oh my God, it's dirty, don't look. You can look at right there, not past that because it's kind of dirty. And the steering wheel. So this is an S2000 steering wheel, but it's legitimately the same as a DC5 steering wheel. You got the tachometer that revs all the way up to 8,000. 
goes up to 160 miles an hour. I doubt you'll ever get there, but hey, it's there. All in all, this interior is actually really nice. It's very comfortable, it's very roomy. Um, all the small homies know what you can do in the back, which is haul a shit ton of fucking groceries. You're gonna be all right back there, man. Let me, let me tell you that. Pack a lot of salchicha back there. Anyways, uh, let's get back to the interior. Uh, it feels really good. Clutch is light. Shifter, if you have a stock shifter, that's actually really comfortable. Aftermarket shifters for days. You got hybrid racing, Acuity, Buddy Club, K-Tune, eBay K-Tune, and whatever else you might want to do. But honestly, personally, you're all right with the stock one. You don't got to spend a hundred bucks on, maybe, maybe you do got to spend a hundred bucks. Mm. Mm. It's been doing good. Actually, hasn't been doing too bad. Anyways, that's it for the interior. Honestly, it's a really nice interior. You're going to look really good. You're going to feel very sporty. As you can see from my POV videos, it looks really freaking good. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know what else you might want from an interior. You got a stereo. You got a hazard button. Your climate controls. The car comes with AC. Ruins about like 20 to 30 horsepower. But hey, who cares? You know, AC for days rather than 100 degrees outside. That's for losers. Now this is the very last point and I made this point kind of clear in my things that I love about this car video, which is, it's kind of two things. It's VTEC and it's also the naturally aspirated high rev motor. The era of cheap performance cars that rev high and are quick and naturally aspirated is basically over. Nobody's really making it because there's no real target audience to buy those types of cars besides young people that can't really afford it, which sucks. Everyone wants high horsepower, high torque, whatnot. Nobody wants lightweight, low power. Look what happened with the FRS 86. Cars like these are no longer being produced by almost any manufacturer besides, you know, Porsche, but who can afford a Porsche? I mean, I'd have one if I could, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, these cars are almost like a piece of history to me. To me, not factual or anything like that. It's just my opinion. I believe that these cars are a piece of history. Um, for $4,000 to $8,000, like uh, $4,000 to $8,000 for an RSX Type S with low miles, clean title, I wouldn't say it's an investment, but it's gonna last you a long time. And who knows with the new Integra, whether it's gonna appreciate, depreciate. Um, it's really cool. I believe everyone should kind of go through their Honda phase with a nice car that's tried and true, whether that be an S2000, EG Civic, EK Civic, um, any two liter high revving motor. I say give it a shot, why not? Buy an RSX, try it out, see if you like it. I obviously loved it. I wanted to get a V8 <laughs> and I fucking, I love this car. There's nothing that I would rather, you know, drive besides a Civic Type R and S2000. Maybe one day, hopefully. The Honda bug is real and uh, who knows guys, Maybe it'll be the right thing for you. So, hope you guys have a great day. I hope this video kind of helped you out. I know I kind of went off a few times, but um, I like these cars. So, have a good day, you guys. Stay blessed, stay healthy. See you guys later. <laughs>
Rev high, burn oil, drive low, save gas, who knows? Do whatever you feel like. It's not me, it's your life, do it. I'm just making a video. I'm not gonna be very popular, but I love doing it anyways, cause I like making videos, just fucking do it. Fucking do it, Honda life, what the fuck? You, who, who the fuck is it gonna fucking talk down on you? Everybody, who cares? I don't, I can't, I, don't, I can't care. I'm losing followers, guys. Fuck it. It's my car, I love it. You don't care, it's my car.